It will be held uh, with all of our council members participating in person. The public can join this meeting via Zoom. In order to allow the town clerk enough time to make sure everything is working properly and folks are able to join the meeting, we will begin the meeting in about five minutes or so. Anyone who wishes to speak during public comment should type their name and address in the chat box. You will be called on and unmuted when it's your turn to speak. Public comments that were submitted to the town clerk prior to the meeting will be read first. As usual, public comments will be limited to no more than three minutes. Thank you for being patient with us as we adjust to hosting electronic meetings. As it relates to public comment, anyone who wishes to speak during the public comment periods should type their name and address in the chat box, and you'll be called on and unmuted when it's your turn to speak. Public comments that were submitted to the town clerk prior to the meeting will be read first by myself or by the mayor pro tem. As usual, public comments will be limited to no more than three minutes. Thank you. We're going to dispense with a second reading of that and just call the meeting to session in about 10 seconds. The regular meeting of the Southern Shores Town Council for September the 1st, 2020, is now in session. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. During our moment of silence this evening, I would ask that you keep the residents of our Gulf Coast and the many others Im impacted by Hurricane Laura in your thoughts and prayers. In a second, um, a second thing I'd like to mention is that many of our larger communities are and have been dealing with civil unrest in measures like we haven't seen pretty much in my lifetime. This has gone beyond a rally or a demonstration in many cases. Yeah, let's, let's keep the residents of these communities and their leaders in our thoughts as well. Thank you. Thank you. Council, I need a motion to uh, approve the agenda or, or a motion to, approve, to, to amend the agenda if, if so needed. So moved to approve, to approve the agenda. Thank you, Leo. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Jim. Any further discussion about that? If not, I'll ask for the vote to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Elizabeth. Leo, aye. Thank you, Leo. Jim, aye. Aye. Man, Mary aye. says aye, aye, too. Thank you. This time I need a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda, which is the minutes of the workshop meeting from 721 and 8 and 616. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda, which Thank includes you. those two minutes. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll second it. Thank you, Leo. Any further discussion? If not, I ask for the vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Leo, aye. Jim, aye. Matt, aye. Tom, aye. Thank you. This time I'll call on our deputy town manager. Excellent. Mayor, if it's okay, I'll give his report. Sure. Uh, Sorry, Cliff. I didn't realize really, he wasn't here. Uh, Planning director. The uh, report for July for permits, there were 47 permits issued, and those permits consisted of nine zoning permits, one sign permit, 14 building permits, 21 trade permits, two lot disturbance permits, and the total amount of fees collected in July was $15,112.60. The August permit report, 38 permits were issued, 
that consisted of seven zoning permits, 13 building permits, 15 trade permits, three lot disturbance, three lot disturbance permits, and the total amount of fees collected in August were $5,275.40. Thank you, Cliff. Any questions of the of Cliff on that, on that report, Council? This time I'll call on Police Chief David Cole. Good evening, David. Evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, I have two reports for you. First one is July. And uh, the calls for service for the month of July 2020 were 2,045. Compared to last year, which was 1338, that's about that's 707 more calls for service than last year. Um, under the incidents, as you can see, we had 36 of those. Uh, 10 of those were uh, drug related. Five were driving while intoxicated. Uh, and as you can see, some of the other ones. Under the arrests, we had nine total arrests. Seven of those were for the drugs forward for the driving while intoxicated. Um, under the citations, officers during the month of July, they stopped 271 motor vehicles. And out of that 271, they wrote 127 uh, written citations and another 140 warning citations for the month of July. Under the ordinances, uh, there was 168 of those and that was our community resource officer. Uh, 141 of those were failed to display uh, the parking permits. Four were parked in restricted areas and 18 that were parked in the right of way for a total of 168. We had 12 motor vehicle accidents for the month of July. And for August 2020, we had 1,873 calls for service. Uh, in 2019, we had 1,257, so that's an increase of 616. Under the incidents, we had 20, uh, we had 27, but there was a total of 60 offenses regarding that. Um, the ones I'm going to highlight, we had 29 that were drug related, uh, four more DWIs, driving while intoxicated. Uh, we had a child abuse. And uh, under the criminal arrest, we had uh, 16 that were actually arrested, but there were 37 total charges. And as you can see, there were 19 of them regarding the drugs, four for the driving while intoxicated, and one for the child abuse uh, for a total of 37. Under the citations, officers stopped 146 cars, and they wrote 116 traffic tickets and another 63 warning tickets, citations. Under the ordinances, we had 143 that were issued. That was 118 that were failed to display, eight for parking in a restricted area, and we had 16 that were parked in the right of way. And we had a total of 10 motor vehicle accidents uh, for the month of August. Just two other things I would like to, to let you know. Uh, one is, I think most of you are aware that, that we had applied for a, uh, a grant for body-worn cameras going on a little over two years ago when we were approved for it. It started out at 50000 and then within the next two years it got down to $25,000. Um, I'm here to report tonight that we finally got the cameras. Uh, we're hoping within the next two weeks that the officers will actually be utilizing them in the field. The other thing I would like to note is last Saturday, um, <clears throat> one of our officers responded with EMS uh, to 8 6th Avenue. It was a rental house. And, uh, and that was Officer Josh Liverman. He assisted uh, EMS in delivering a healthy baby boy. And I mean, he <laughs> physically assisted in helping. So that's kind of a good note to end on. And if you have any questions, oh, when she was, she was a month, <clears throat> she had gone to the doctor, they got here Saturday, she had gone to the doctor in Virginia Friday, he says, 
you're good to go for another month or two. Um, <laughs> so she was a month early. They missed wow. that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, Might be the salt water too, I don't know. <laughs> Any questions? Just, uh, yes, sir. I notice I think we're seeing this drug mm -hmm. thing going up. That's correct. Scale. Is there help for some of these people? Are they seeking help? Well, they are, some of them, but <clears throat> a lot of them, you're very limited on what you can do and what you can get. Uh, and, and unfortunately, a lot, of the, a lot of the problems we're having, a lot of the people that we're arresting are not from here. They're from over the bridge, those types of things. But, you know, where there's an incident where we can, then obviously we, we try to refer them to it. But, it's become even worse. My, my personal opinion is because of the pandemic. Uh, that doesn't help things. And uh, it's along with domestics, we've seen a significant increase in domestics as well. Did any of those have to use your uh, No, those were, these are just, these are drug arrests. These are, so, a lot of these, what you're seeing, are traffic stops. Um, we haven't had too many overdoses here. Um, we've had a couple, but. Um, these are either traffic stops or these are drug incidents that we've been investigating for several months that, that we've finally been able to establish enough probable cause for search warrants and, and made arrests. Um, yeah, that's what all these are. These are these are people that are dealing, selling, buying, using. And this is just Southern Shores. So. And a lot of them are people that are just coming through, too. It's not all of them. That actually live in Southern Shores, but yes. Chief, could you hazard a guess as to what percentage of the traffic citations are cut through traffic? Seventy-three percent. No. I, <laughs> I took care of that. Uh, I, I would have no. All I can tell you is that that those weekly reports that I give you with the citations. The majority of those citations, those are issued, you know, in the side streets, but it'd be pretty difficult for me to give you a, oh, an exact okay. total on that. Right. But I can tell you that the majority of those that they're writing on the weekends, that's cut through traffic. Um, they're trying to hit all of the residential streets, Sea Oats, Wax, Myrtle, Hillcrest. And uh, so those reports where I'm giving you those, <clears throat> those are definitely related to cut through traffic. Well, I was fishing, but okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else have any questions of the chief? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, David. Ed Limbacher, our fire chief. Good evening, Ed. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. I also have two reports, one from this month and one from the month. Uh, last month also uh, we'll do July 1st so for the month of July the fire department responded to a total or was dispatched to a total of 80 calls 13 of those were building fires two were brush fires 28 were medical EMS calls one was an accident with injuries four were just property damage only one lockout one search for a person in the water one stalled elevator, rescue from an elevator, three surf rescue, one water rescue, one electric equipment wiring problem, one heat or defective worn wiring, uh, one power line down, eight service calls, which basically of our most of that is our wheelchair program, one public service, one assist the police or government agency, two public service, one canceled en route, eight alarms and one citizen complaint. That was 80 for the month of July, and we were well behind last year at 101 from last year, so we were like 21 calls behind. So, any questions on July's report? All right, so uh, for this month, actually last month, August, we were dispatched to 101 calls, uh, one fire inside the building, two structure fires, I'm sorry, three fires inside other than the building, one passenger vehicle fire, one brush fire, 49 EMS calls, 
two motor vehicle accidents with no injuries, another stalled elevator, <clears throat> one surf rescue, one hazardous condition, one gas leak, one electrical wiring problem, one arcing or shorting wire, six service calls, again, our wheelchair program for the month, two, one public service, three public service other, uh, one standby, which this month was for Roanoke Island. They had one of their members killed in the, uh, on the bridge down there. We sent an engine down there to answer calls while their guys attended his funeral. So that was the standby this, this time. Uh, one canceled en route. One, there are three odor, odor of smoke or smoke scare, 17 alarms, one CO alarm, one citizen complaint. A total, again, of 101. And that is a little bit ahead of 2019 at 97. So we're a couple calls ahead this time. So really no rhyme or reason. I consider July probably the, due to COVID, but EMS calls are down generally. So that was probably most of the reason why we were behind there. Any call, any uh, questions on the reports for the calls for the months, either month? Any questions for the chief? Uh, just for now that we're official on the record here for the building, just so everybody knows, uh, I was telling Councilman Neal that um, we have a date set for the 16th and 17th for the Stewart Cooper in order to do their final approval walkthrough, and, and then they'll have Buddy over there at the same time. I've already had, we're notified Buddy, the building inspector for Southern Shores, be over there. Hopefully, we'll be able to get our CO and finally be in the building. So, uh, again, I'm not putting my reputation on any of that because dealing with these people has been difficult. So. What's your, what's your target date again? Uh, we have a date scheduled for the 16th and 17th for the architects to do their final walkthrough, and Buddy will obviously be a part of that because he ultimately issues the certificate of occupancy. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This time I'll call on the town manager. Yes, sir, just briefly a few things. One, um, beach nourishment uh, right now, just a brief update we have. Two projects working uh, with Coastal, uh, Coastal Protection and Engineering, CPE, the, the first being the uh, finishing up the 2020 annual monitoring and uh, initial permitting. Um, as you know, we just initiated task two, but they're 85% complete with the uh, profile uh, of the data acquisition and then 100% done with the interagency coordination for permitting um, the, I anticipate that we'll have a full report and um, be able to report to you hopefully in October um, the condition of the beach and how it's uh, how the projects uh, held up the other um, which was recently initiated the permitting for the 2022 project um, two of the tasks are more near completion than the other three the sampling of the beach uh, and then the surveying to quantify the um, class um, the native sampling is 40 percent complete the survey for the class are uh, 80 percent complete uh, and they're just now starting um, at one percent two percent uh, for the bar area investigation uh, engineering and design and the uh, environmental documentation and permitting um, also uh, Britt Johnson who's the Dare County project manager he, he reported last week that DEQ has finished the review of their grant applications. Uh, th these were, this was the $2.5 million grants that were available for um, sand beach nourishment or uh, stabilization projects. Uh, we should be uh, expecting to have uh, the results of the grant recipients uh, later this month. Uh, just an uh, update on the project that's now finished with streets, uh, the East Dogwood Street Project, all the punch list items that they are done. Uh, and the, the two crosswalks uh, have both been installed. Uh, and then on Dewberry, um, the, the prep work, the site work uh, is completed and RPC should be starting any day now with the actual construction um, of that project. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, as a reminder, uh, of Labor Day weekend coming up, as you know, Friday will be the last day of summer trash pickup. Uh, we'll go to the winter schedule. Um, actually starting Monday will be the last uh, uh, on the Memorial Day to Labor Day and then after that we'll
the switch. Um, Wes brought up a good point today. Uh, one thing we have to keep a close eye on is with going to one day a week for trash, you know, we're talking later about the anticipation of additional continued occupancy. We may, I don't know if we'll be able to, but something we need to keep in mind is can we adjust if we're starting to see one day is not enough. Uh, and I reached out to Bay to have that conversation to see how quickly we could go back to two days if, if necessary. Um, that, I believe, is all I have to report. Any questions for Cliff Council? Just one, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, do you have any? A uh, couple months ago, you gave us a number on the tons of tr of solid of trash. Do you have any new numbers to indicate? I, d I don't know if Bonnie and I talked about that. We didn't talk about the numbers today. We talked about the numbers going back, but. It, but we did report early on that tonnage was way up. Yeah. And I don't know that we've seen anything to indicate anything different than that. Yeah, with not yet. I mean, last year it was about uh, 2,300. Yeah, but yeah, I think we're, we're going to see an increase, but mm -hmm. I'll report back those, mm -hmm. um, the more recent numbers I guess we should have July and August soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Thank you, Cliff. Any um, town of town attorneys report? I'm sorry, Ben. I don't have anything to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. General public comment? Anybody want to speak? All right. Thank you. Moving ahead. Uh, no, no business under old business. Uh, under new business, uh, traffic engineer, seasonal cut through traffic, tab one in our book. Cliff, I think this is yours. Uh, yes, sir. You'll see we've uh, provided a staff report on what, what's been done today. The police chief and I, the police chief's been involved a lot in this process as we speak to consultants or we speak to different traffic engineers and traffic planners um, about the information and the data that we have, um, they, they reach out to the chief to kind of try and start drilling in a little bit more specifically to those numbers about hours and, um, you know, more information about where, where this data is collected and so forth. So we're, we're continuing to, to meet and have these discussions um, in hopes of finding somebody that could work with us to to recommend some solutions or to recommend some potential outcomes from the data that we've collected from the um, uh, cut through traffic. Um, I've also had communication with, um, and Chief did today as well, um, a gentleman with NCDOT that has kind of been, uh, he must be new to his position because he's been somewhat of, of a breath of fresh air. Um, <laughs> it it's just seems to be a different take on an old problem. Um, he, uh, Mr. Joe Hummer, he's with the uh, State Traffic Management uh, Department, uh, Mobility and Safety Division with NCDOT. He actually is, has a uh, doctorate and uh, was a, a professor at NC State. Um, he actually came down here and visited us this past weekend to do his own analysis and to see for himself um, he's really interested in that data. Of course, DOT collects data of their own, so I think we can develop a new relationship with, um, at least from the 158 and 12 aspect of this problem of, of things that they may be able to do. I know this is an issue that's been ongoing, and it's hard to imagine that too many um, scenarios or options haven't been discussed, um, but I'm thankful for his input. Also, um, I've spoken with tried to reach out to Itri with NC State. You know, you're familiar with them. They, they've worked with the town before. They're, they're no longer in this type of business. They do more strictly research now, so that's not a, really an option for us. Um, I think the uh, private sector felt as though Itri was infringing upon um, private projects. Um, so that's kind of gone by the wayside. But I have had communication with technology group out of East Carolina that might be able to help with some of the, the apps. Um, that there, there's actually, a, through Waze, there's actually a um, platform, Waze Cities, that, you know, I know we've, we've hit 
dead ends in trying to communicate with them, but there, there may be a way that we can work with that platform. I encourage you to look at that as ways cities. Um, that we might be able to kind of use uh, our weekend traffic as event traffic and try and maybe steer people away. But that, that's a, a part there. But really what this, what we're looking for here is the board's authorization to move forward with an amount up to not more than $7,500 to work with a, a consultant that may also partner with some of these other groups that I just mentioned to really take a deep dive into the, the data um, to look at other things that maybe we don't have like speed. Um, they can look at speed analysis and travel time analysis. They can look at uh, you know, the, um, the, the volume that's coming from one direction to another. They can potentially cut the town up into different segments to study the traffic patterns in, in uh, separate parts instead as a whole. But really I think what, what the hope here is that we have a, a, an outside look what the numbers mean, um, an outside look um, that, that doesn't have a preconceived emotional thought as to what needs to be done. They're just looking at it purely objectively um, and offering us solutions that we may be able to implement. So what we're asking for is, is uh, council's authorization uh, to allow staff to enter into a contract with a um, traffic engineer in an amount not to exceed $7,500. Um, we've been in contact with five, and we have two proposals anticipating uh, two more. The 7500 would that come from the unassigned balance? Because no, I don't think I, we had a budgeted item. I think we can find that um, from Mr. Bradley's budget. Oh. <laughs> uh, I believe there's some funds there that, that we could use without having to go into the into fund balance. Okay. So would you like a motion now? Listen, you, you, you can make a motion if you'd like. Uh, go ahead. Well, since he's, since we're fresh off what he just said, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the staff to spend up to $7,500 to hire a traffic consultant to study the problem of cut through traffic and offer solutions for that problem. I would love to second that motion. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, um, you know, we have a lot of collected data and it seems like a good expense of town funds to get somebody from a professional perspective to take a look at the problem. I, I could not agree more with having a fresh outside look yeah. also get the emotion out of it yeah, that's that's a good point get the get emotion the, out of it yes I, I, that's a good point leo I, I think in fairness though we've got we have a committee a cut through traffic committee we, we need to have we need to address in some way we either either have them be included in this or not be included in this and that's something we have to we, have to make, we can make a decision about the night or not or some other time but we we're probably wasting their time if they aren't going to be involved in this, we may have, and have a professional come in and help, or professionals come in and help us with some, with some fresh thoughts and fresh ideas. So, how, what's your thinking about that, Council? There, there's one other thing I'd like to say on this subject before we take a vote on it, and that is, I think that each member of this council could write down some of our thoughts on solutions and just relay them to that traffic consultant, and just let him yay or nay them or whatever but we are closer to this issue than he may be and it would not hurt for us to just offer solutions but we not push any particular solution get that outside views you know that outside take on it and i will send my thoughts within the next day or two because i've already been thinking of quite a few and going back Mr. Mayor, if I may, um, I've shared the, the, the minutes of the traffic study committee so far, just so they can get a general idea of what's been discussed and what the sentiment is. So that information has been shared with them. available to them. It's on the internet. So. Okay. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, David, you had a question.
not bias it. And we can be available as a sounding board for them right. if they need input. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I Let's keep it double blind. I could go along with that. I mean, just cut them loose and let them do their job. So what would be the timeline? I mean, do you have, like, you're still getting proposals back. And yeah. they I, need 90 days to yes. 180 days. Yeah, I, uh, well, I, I think once the 90 days, I think 30 days with, not, 90 days at the most, I think. Okay. The, 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 downside of it being September 1st is that it's hard to you know I don't I don't know if they need folks that analyze numbers need to see on, on the ground they're not going to be able to see that between now I've kind of looked at this as if we can get these solutions that we can implement next year mm -hmm. that gives us time the, the bad part is I think and this they want is an opportunity data. for them to to see what Mr. Homer saw when he came last yeah. week but I think 90 days from the, from the point of Initiation be realistic. Do you have any uh, expectation as to when you might get the other two proposals? Uh, end of next week. End of next week. So Definitely. that would be after. Labor Day. Okay. Okay. Bummer. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any, any further discussion? If not, I'll ask for a vote uh, to, to approve the, sta the uh, council authorizing the town manager to enter a contract for cons consulting services to produce a, a report providing the town with viable options to address the seasonal cut through traffic in an amount not to exceed $7,500. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Leo, aye. Jim, aye. Aye. The mayor says aye. Thank you. Motion's made and carried. Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Next item is extension of the ocean rescue season. We talked about this because of the um, probable um, extension of the season itself into, into possibly the, the mid-October. That could be impacted by a storm event, as we all know, but if, if the weather stays like it is right now, there's a good chance we'd be into late September, even possibly in the mid, late, late October. So, Cliff, I'm going to turn it back over to you again. Okay, yes, sir. What, uh, in uh, consultation with Merrick Dabrowski and with Sansky, um, came up with three options for the council to consider. Um, in your packet, you'll see um, presently under the contract, $166,200 a year. We, until October 15th, we have a shared supervisor um, shared with Duck patrolling until October 15th. We have two fixed stands and two on ATVs until Labor Day. And then another, then we have just one other ATV that's patrolling until October 15th. So it, each, the, the three options, each one kind of steps down the service from the first, and the first being extending that shared supervisor uh, until October 31st. That would add 16 additional days. Um, extending the two fixed stands and, and the two on eight TVs until October 3rd, which would be an additional 26 days, October 3rd being a Saturday. Um, I think it may be a Sunday, but that, that weekend. But additional 26 days of, of fixed stands and ATV, and then extending that eight TV that we had until the 15th, additional 16 days that's that's a lot of well I mean that's uh, that's extending the season that's that's treating October 3rd like Labor Day that's an anticipation that the crowd that we have up until Labor Day will be here until October 3rd and then continuing patrolling on until October 31st with a supervisor and an ATV that that's it's getting kind of late in the year but that's that's full coverage um, and then from there it steps down. You'll see uh, option two drops down to $18,000, uh, which would uh, leave 
the shared supervisor and, and the patrol and ATV would leave them on the beach until uh, October 15th, the way it is now. Um, so that would be an, that would be a savings. And then the third option um, would be to take the stands off the beach. Uh, the only difference between option two and option three would be that we take the um, stands off the beach uh, Labor Day and just have again the shared supervisor three on an ATV until the third and then one additional until the 15th. Um, I, I think either, any of these, I mean, all this is going to have to come out of fund balance and you have three budget amendments also a part of this if, if you choose one of these three options. Um, I, 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 I mean, this is a, this is a council's decision, but I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable recommending uh, any of these, but particularly I think we'd be covered with option two. Does Merrick have the personnel to, yes. to do all this? Yes, sir. And there's actually two, two things I'm asking for here. But the first is for one of these options. I'm sorry, the first is what? Well, the, the first action uh, or, or uh, option. The, the first option. There's two things we're asking for here. One is that you pick one of these options to extend the season. And then the second is to amend the overall contract to go through the end of October next year. And I'll explain that. Right now the contract it ends on June 30th of 2021. And I'm recommending that you extend that till the end of the season because it's, it's conceivable that if we were to hire a new contractor on July 1st, it means one's gonna leave the beach on the 30th and the other one's gonna come on the beach on the 1st. Now that may or may not happen, but I think by, by design, we'd rather have that, whoever starts the summer to finish the summer. So it's a separate action I'm asking that you extend at least it contract this contract until the end of October. And then when we enter into a new contract next year, it would be November 1st, October 31st. So hopefully that didn't confuse you, but there's two different parts. Everyone understand that? Okay. Um, I was inclined to I was inclined originally for option three. Um, does anybody see a major benefit to keep the stands? I, I was thinking the same thing. I don't see an advantage to having the stands out there personally because I, I think the 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 personnel uh, on the four wheelers. Yeah. The four wheeler becomes the stand. You know when they stop it. They hang out for a while and they make sure everybody's good and then they go on down the beach again so it's kind of like a moving stand is the way i look at it so i i agree with option it also three. starts getting a lot colder <laughs> yeah water during that time. yeah well, the water still I usually that time you're still a little warm but it's when you get out <laughs> so, you, so you're, you're looking you're looking at option three or option two i think i was i was leaning towards three initially um, and I, if everybody is well. i'd be happy to make it but I'll, I'll go with two, but yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm open for either one. Uh, what you know, do you I, think? I mean, do you think the stands have value? Or? Well, I think if people start after the third. The, the stands may, may be of value, but not until the third. You know, I, I, think the, I think the ATVs could serve the function of a stand mm -hmm. this time of year. I mean, yeah. they're in a position probably to respond. They can, they can, the, the ATV can, if, it, if there is a crowded group of swimmers, that they can, you know, stay there. Yeah. Otherwise, they're, I think it's okay. With them. So that allows them to move where the crowd may be. Right. Or, or to stand, they couldn't do anything. I, I think three would be a logical one. What stand would you leave up? Leave up ones at Dillcrest and the one at uh, tri a Triangle or yeah. Chickahaw? Under three, they come down. They come under down. Three, they would come down. No, I understand but, uh, that. But if they were to stay up, they would be the same. Hillcrest and Chickahaw? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I, would you whatever your pleasure is, Council, if you want to make a motion to go option three, we can, you can, we can consider that. I'm, I, I agree with Leo. I'm kind of, I, would, I would do two or three. I wouldn't do one, for sure. So. Uh, I'll just make a motion that we um, uh, approve uh, staff to uh, look at to use option three for extending the, the season season no, I'll second it thank you Leo any, any further discussion 
So let's take care of this one item first. Yes. Just go ahead and vote on uh, the, directing the staff to, to exercise option three as far as the, the lifeguard service. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Leo, aye. Jen, aye. Aye. Tom says aye. So the motion is made and carried to adopt option three as our coverage. The other, the other thing we have to act on is the, uh, is the budget amendment to cover option three first, which is um, for 13,000. Do we have, since we approved the option three, that's Mayor, <coughs> first we're going to amend the contract. No, no. Can I ask if you do that? Um, I was just sitting over there thinking um, I did 11, 12, and 13 for the budget amendments. So if you all do option number three, can we just make make it in the um, minutes that that would actually be budget um, amendment number 11 because that's what's next. Okay. We just did option one, two, and three, and we did different budget amendment numbers so it wouldn't be confusing. But I, I, I think, am I reading this right? Option three is budget amendment number 13 correct yes but it, we actually are at budget number 11 and uh, budget amendment number 11 for the year we call this budget, budget 12. yes okay. yeah I just wanted that to be in the minutes to make sure that was all clear yeah. if that's so okay. option three is actually a budget that. amendment if we approve that it's budget amendment number 11 correct for 13 for option number three I'll make a motion to approve budget amendment number 11 for thirteen thousand five hundred dollars for option three do I have a second? I'll, I'll second, I'll second it for you. <laughs> Did you second that, Leo? Thank yes. You. Thank Thanks, you. Bonnie, for the clarification. <laughs> we have a motion then to, to go ahead and approve budget number budget amendment number 11, if that's appropriate this time. All in favor? Aye. Leo, aye. Jim, aye. Aye. Tom votes aye as well. So we, we're, we're going to go with with option for thirteen thousand five hundred dollars we're gonna call it option we're gonna call it budget amendment number eleven. The other the other question is do we is with the contract, I need a motion to to extend his contract. Is it an extension of a contract or a new contract? Uh, just amend it to extend amend his contract. Right. To uh, to expire in uh, what was the date you gave us October? October thirty one twenty 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 one, okay. Uh, does everybody have that? Yeah. Do I have a motion to do that? So moved. Thank you, Matt. Any further discussion of that? Uh, yeah, let, me get, let me get a second first. I'll second. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any further discussion? Question, question I got is, does that, you know, we've got the one amount. Is there an amount being added to that, or is that the same? No, it, the, the budget was done $110,000, which would have carried us up until June 30. Right. So we're covered in this fiscal year. Yeah, I'm we talking about the following year. Next year we'll have to budget the difference. The, a full year would be 166610 I think. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to budget the difference uh, in, in the, in the 20, FY 2022 budget. Yeah, from June 30th to, to October. October 1st or whatever. October 30th. October 30th, yes. So that's all. That's a question. Have we approved all we have to approve here? Yes, yes. We still got a vote. All in favor of uh, that last motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Leo, aye. 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 Motion is made and carried to extend the contract to October 31st. Is that correct? Thank you. Our next item of business is to amend the council's rules of procedure, section 7, to address recessed and canceled meetings, tab 3 in your book. I can I can ask Cliff to, to to explain this, but I think the reason that this came up is because we found ourselves in a situation where we had to call a meeting to cancel a meeting, mm -hmm. which was kind of redundant, maybe not necessary. So, if you want to tell us what your thoughts yeah. are, Cliff? Yeah. Um, the staff's recommendation is that uh, council amend the your rules of procedure um, to add section uh, under section seven D um, the ability to cancel meetings. See uh, in the in your packet, what, what it says is the mayor, the mayor 
pro tem or any two council members may cancel a regular, special, or emergency meeting due to unforeseen emergencies. Whenever there is no pending business before the council or whenever the mayor is notified by the clerk that a quorum will not be present, the mayor or mayor pro tem may dispense with the regular or special meeting by instructing the clerk to give written or written or oral notice to all members not less than 24 hours prior to the time set for the meeting and having a notice of cancellation posted at the meeting place declaring such. So I think it's just makes it a little bit easier on you all when there's no need to have a meeting that you can this procedure's in place uh, canceling a meeting due to unforeseen emergencies, lack of business, or if we find there's no quorum. Any questions about that council? When we amended this in March, we just allowed it to be canceled during a declared emergency. Yeah, we're, we're taking it so it's not limited just to that, that situation. And the conditions here are unforeseen emergency or if there's no business. All right? Right. Mm -hmm. But we have business. Or no quorum. Or no quorum. Yeah, or no quorum. You're exactly yeah. right. Thank you for pointing that out. I guess, for example, if you may or may not have a, a meeting, mid-month meeting in September, which you can adjourn this meeting to October. Um, if, 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 you, if you didn't do that and you found out tomorrow there wasn't a quorum without this, I believe you'd have to be to do the same thing. So by, by doing this now, you could, if, if you didn't cancel the meeting, the mid-month meeting, um, if this gives you the ability to So do I have a motion? To, I already asked for that motion, and I we have a motion to to move forward with this and and, and adopt this change to uh, our meeting schedule. So I would like to make a, a motion that we revise our uh, rules. rules of procedure to include the seven section seven paragraph D, D. cancellation of meetings as recommended by staff. And I'll second it. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'd call for the vote. Um, all in favor of, of adopting this uh, amendment to the rules of procedure, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Leo, aye. 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 So the motion is made and carried to, to change the rules of procedure to reflect this, uh, the council meeting rule. Any further business, council? Let's see here what's coming up on the book. Public comment. Yes. Any, any public comment request? If not, I'll close public comment at this time. Um, I have no further comments myself. But you, you, each, each of you a chance to say a word if you like. Elizabeth. I don't. I don't have any comments tonight, Mr. Mayor. Leo. Uh, I just got some uh, information from the tourism board. Good. Some of you may have seen uh, some of the information out there. Uh, occupancy and uh, collections. This is uh, for the month of June. It was 1.8 percent, which is an increase over last year, which is a record for the last three or four years. Uh, unfortunately, calendar year to date, we're still behind at 17 percent. And when you look uh, look at that or break that down, the hotel business is up 2 percent. Vacation and rentals is up 1.3 percent. And the big one is campgrounds is up 32%. And our business for that June, July, and August, we get about 70% of our, of our business in that, that time frame. Uh, food is, an, is a different, and on well, the other side, believe it or not, the Wright Brothers is way off. And probably I think a little bit is that the building is not open. Uh, Fort Raleigh is down. Uh, the Cape Hatter Seashore Group is up 3%. Uh, food uh, is uh, still a challenge. It's uh, for the month of June is off 10%. Calendar year to date is off 33%. So there's still the restaurant groups have got to have a, have a challenge there. There's still a demand to come here. Uh, and there's uh, a lot of 
the concern is safety, and we're still perceived as a safe de destination. Uh, but what they're finding is the inquiries are more for any outdoor activity. So, uh, and if you've noticed on 158, I see one lot of RVs going up and down the road. So uh, that's the foremost on the tourist mind. Uh, one other thing, you'll be getting, uh, uh, seeing a press release tomorrow. This is uh, for uh, 2019 activity. Uh, the Derrick County tourism expanded by 6.7 percent in uh, 2019, and that's. Uh, spending of about 1.27 billion dollars and so and we also surpassed that 6.7 we surpassed the state average growth which there is is 5.6 so we're, we're we're leading that charge in the tourism growth but uh the interesting thing is uh the get over tax revenue uh, produced by visitors to the Outer Banks equi equates to about $3,147 in tax relief to our citizens in Dare County. So uh, as much as we may sometimes fuss about the tours, uh, they do provide a pretty good sizable break for us from a tax standpoint. But you'll see this uh, in the papers tomorrow. So everybody's kind of happy about that one. And hopefully this trend will continue that I talked about earlier don't know if we'll get back to break even for these businesses but any you know in the restaurant size if there's anything you can help there take out or whatever uh, try to do because they are they're, they're struggling and that's all I got thank you Leo Jim I just want to say a couple words about the US Census um, the deadline for that was originally back out, I think, May 1st. Um, I may be wrong on that one. It doesn't really matter because they've extended it. I think it's now until September 30th. And the town newsletter has information on how to participate in that census if you have not yet. So please, if you do not get the newsletter, just please call the town hall and correct me, Ms. Or town manager if I'm wrong but they can speak to either you or Sheila to get the links where you can take the census online it takes about 10 minutes and there's a lot of money at stake on this uh, as I have reported previously about 750 billion dollars a year comes from the feds down to the states and that and a good chunk of that money filters on down to the county and then municipal level. So um, if there's anybody out there who has not taken the census, it's a very important civic duty that we can uh, step up to the plate on. That helps a lot. Nationwide, the census participation rate is down. <coughs> North Carolina is doing worse than the nationwide average. I have been unable to obtain breakdowns on what the individual towns are and compare it with what we had but previously in 2010 at the last census southern shores had an 88 percent participation rate so if you haven't taken a census please log in and do so please and it also so, it also impacts our who we, number of representatives we have that's a big one in addition to the money Matt? No Thank you. I would just re kind of reaffirm what Leo said a few minutes ago about the restaurants. Uh, and I've talked to a number of restaurant owners in the last two or three weeks, and they're all saying in the 25 to 30 percent down for the year. Uh, they're hoping that we'll have a longer fall season that will yeah. help them a lot. Uh, there probably will be some that don't make it. Hopefully there will be a few, and most of them will survive. Any further business? All right. I need a motion to adjourn, Council. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.